What's happening guys, I'm Techsaurus. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some really cool tech for your PC under $50. Let's begin. Before I begin, I do wanna give a huge thanks to Disco for sponsoring this video. Disco is a simple to install program for Windows and Mac with the necessary tools to synchronize and manage your stored files. It utilizes the available storage in your cloud services and provides a bridge to transfer files right into your computer's file directory. The cloud compatibility is phenomenal, supporting eight major services with more coming in the future. Multiple accounts from the same service can be used if that is your preference. A great use for this application is collaborative work. For example, keeping all downloaded files in a single easy access location the process of managing files for the respective projects is simplified. Disco allows you to transfer files of any kind. Synchronization is done immediately in the background and disturbances to your internet connection will not be a problem with its ability to save cached information at a later date. From Disco, you can upload as many files to the clouds as their volume allows without taking up space on your computer. Guys, this is a great way to optimize available disk storage while keeping your files at hand. If you want to check out their cloud storage tools and help support the channel, make sure to click the link below. So the first piece of tech we're going to look at is this remote start from Silverstone. Just as the name says, you can reset and power on or off your PC with a remote from up to 20 meters. Who might use something like this, you might ask? Well, that's a good question, actually. Let's say you just came home from work or school and your PC is upstairs or in a different room. Well, as soon as you walk in, you can turn your PC on. That way you can change your clothes if you grab a bite to eat. And then when you're ready to sit in front of your PC, it's booted up and ready to go. You might call it being lazy, but I call it super convenient. Setting it up is very simple. You will need to locate the JFP01 header on your motherboard, which is usually on the bottom, and then hook up the cables from the receiver. So the male power switch connector goes into the top third and fourth pins, while the male reset connector goes into the bottom third and fourth pins, basically right below the power switch. Then you need to connect the female versions of those cables into the cables from your case. So power connects to power, and then reset connects to reset. Very simple. And finally, this unit over here plugs directly into the USB header on your motherboard. If your motherboard has only one USB header, you can actually use the included USB hub to expand your ports. So basically, you would plug the expansion in first, giving you three extra USB ports, and then you can plug in the receiver. But personally, I think this looks a bit too messy. You can see a bunch of cables sticking out from the bottom. So what I do recommend is buying this splitter cable from Amazon. It costs only $9, and you basically plug this into the USB header on your motherboard, and it gives you two additional USB ports, but with a longer cable. So now you can route the cable to the back of the PC and connect the receiver and tuck it away so that it's not visible from the front. This way you have a much cleaner looking build. Now there is one really important setting you have to change in BIOS in order for it to work with your PC. Uh, most motherboards out there don't supply any power to the USB headers by default when the PC is set to off. So if your motherboard is one of those, then we need to go into the settings and then click on the advanced tab and then find the menu that says power management setup or something similar. Once you're in here, make sure to enable USB standby power to make sure that the receiver is getting power even while your PC is off. Next up on the list is the Strimmer RGB PSU cable from Lee & Lee. This is basically a 24 pin RGB extension cable that plugs directly into your 24 pin socket on your motherboard. Now the cables itself are white since they do work the best with RGB lighting and the RGB portion sits right on top of that using cable combs. Now there are two different ways of controlling the lighting on these. The easiest way is plugging the strimmer directly into the 5 volt 3 pin RGB header on your motherboard and controlling the lighting using your motherboard's RGB software. But if your board doesn't have any RGB headers, then you can use the provided controller. Plug both of the cables provided into the controller just like you see here, and then plug the small 3 pin connector into the strimmer itself and the other SATA cable into one of the SATA cables from the power supply. Afterwards, simply remove one of the PCI brackets from the back of your case and install it like you would normally do with a PCI card. But don't worry because it doesn't actually use any PCI slots on your motherboard. After you are done, you can control the strimmer directly by pressing either of the three buttons for speed, brightness, or mode. And it actually has some pretty cool modes to choose from. However, you can set a static color if you're going for a specific color scheme. It looks really awesome, and if you're all about RGB, then I feel like you're gonna love this thing, but there is one major problem that you need to know about. 
The cable itself is very stiff, making it really hard to fit most cases. Mostly due to the installed cable combs, it's just not flexible at all. So if you plan on putting this in a small case, for example an NZXT H500, then it's not gonna look good especially if you have a cable cover like in most NZXT cases. As you guys can see, I had to completely remove this cover in order for it to even fit. You can't bend these like you normally can on regular power supply cables or even extensions. So routing this in very tight spaces are gonna be very difficult. You need a case with enough space next to the 24 pin, that way you can route the trimmer naturally through the back of the PC. Speaking of 24 pin cable issues, this might solve your problem if your case doesn't give you enough space to route your 24 pin cables more easily. This is a 24 pin right angle adapter that allows your ATX power cable to be routed more naturally through the back of your case. Personally, I do prefer when the cables are curved like this uh, naturally, it gives the cables more of a full effect by default. But nonetheless, that is still a pretty cool piece of tech to have to solve clearance issues. And also it can give modders flexibility on routing the 24 pin cable on small custom ITX builds. Next up on the list is the Halos Lux from Fantex. This here is an RGB fan frame. You can hook this up to your boring non-RGB fan to give it some spice. Pretty straightforward actually. Uh, you can hook this up to your standalone fan using the provided short screws or you can add them to the fans on your radiator with the provided radiator screws. Now this won't work with fans that have raised edges or anti-vibration pads since they do need to sit flush against the fan. Installation is really easy. After you install the fan, you can just plug the cable directly into the 5 volt RGB header on your motherboard. You can also daisy chain as many of these as you want or daisy chain it with other compatible 5 volt RGB products. Next up, we have a set of RGB fans and RGB strips, which I'm currently using in an upcoming build. This entire set costs only $35, and check this out guys, you get three 120mm fans and two LED strips, which I think is an awesome deal. But I'm featuring it because of how cool the fan design is. So it's got two separate RGB rings, so you can mount these any way you like and still get that RGB goodness. The lighting effects on these are also really cool. There's a crap ton of them to choose from and the best part about this is that you don't need any RGB headers on your motherboard, which makes it perfect for low budget PCs. The fans come with a control box that can support up to 10 fans and two LED strips. All you need to do is plug the control box into the Molex connector from your power supply and you are good to go. It's got pretty good airflow and the fans stay quiet even at max speed. You can control the fan speed right from the remote and the brightness as well. The only thing I don't like about these fans is that you can see each individual LED. They are not diffused into the ring like other premium fans, but for the money, these are awesome. If you're on a budget and want to add some RGB to your build, I strongly recommend picking this up. Last but not least, we have the new neon RGB strips from Fantex. The cool thing about these RGB strips is that they are flexible, so you can outline or contour any component in your case. The camera really doesn't do it justice, but the lighting on these look amazing in person. The light is evenly diffused across each strip with no hotspots, and they give off a really nice glow effect. The combo comes with two strips and different mounting options, however, the adhesive is probably the worst I have ever used. 3M VHB is supposed to be one of the strongest adhesive tapes available in the market, but for some reason, these do not stick that well, in my experience. With the slightest wiggle, these come off very quickly, especially if you're doing the 90 degree uh, curves in the corners there. And it's kind of disappointing, to be honest. Um, so I decided to actually use something different. This is also a double-sided tape, but um, it's a little thicker than usual, but it does the job a lot better. Uh, if you guys are planning on picking this up and you're having issues mounting this to your case, I recommend picking this up instead. I'll leave a link below. The strips can be daisy chained together and they are connected straight to your motherboard's 12 volt RGB header. This is the one with the four pins instead of three. And that is it for my video. If this was at all helpful to you guys or if you want me to make this a series, then consider dropping a like. And if you guys are using some pretty cool tech yourselves in your PC that I haven't featured in this video, let me know in the comment section down below as well. I'll drop a link obviously to all the parts mentioned in the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love your faces and I'll see you in the next one.